Now, the United States vice president is blaming America's own allies for the rise of extremists in Iraq and Syria. Joe Biden accuses Turkey and the Gulf nations of being unscrupulous in their pursuit of ousting President Assad and in doing so, funding terrorists for the cause. Well, let's talk more now with our Washington correspondent, Gianni Chikian, who joins us now. Um, what exactly Hi. did he say? Well, Andrew, U.S. officials now openly admit that their ally, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Turkey have supported extremists in Syria and that thanks to their help, ISIS became what it is today. Vice President Joe Biden called the allies the biggest problem the U.S. had in Syria. And we have a clip. Let's, let's listen. Our allies in the region were our largest problem in Syria. Yes, the Turks were great friends, and I have a great relationship with Erdogan, which I've just spent a lot of time with. The Saudis, the Emiratis, etc. What were they doing? They were so determined to take down Assad and essentially have a proxy Sunni Shia war. What did they do? They poured hundreds of millions of dollars and tens of thousands of tons of weapons into anyone who would fight against Assad, except that the people who were being, who were being supplied were al-Nusra and al-Qaeda and the extremist elements of jihadis coming from other parts of the world. Now, you think I'm exaggerating? Take a look. Where did all of this go? So now what's happening? All of a sudden, everybody's awakened because this outfit called ISIL Listening to that, it does seem to be a very marked change of tune, doesn't it? Because a year ago, this wasn't the message. No, that's exactly right, Andrew. It was only about Assad and how to remove him from power. The U.S., too, remember, was focused on that. And the Obama administration used to say that it's coordinating the efforts of the allies to support the Syrian rebels. And Joe Biden now says allies were the biggest problem. I mean, obviously, he's trying to distance himself. From that's what's that's happening exactly from how it seems. Uh, now that grew, ISIS grew into this monster and included many other rebel rebel groups that received training and support from so-called uh, friends of Syria, the U.S. steps back and basically throws its allies under the bus. And one may ask what happened to all that uh, coordination business. He's accused there, the allies, of funding the extremists, which has helped cause the problem of, of ISIS. But also, I mean, America presumably is going to continue the Syrian opposition, the so-called moderate rebels. Exactly. Arming and, and training them. And it promises it will do a better job picking the good rebels from the bad ones. But so far, it seems the U.S. has not been such a great judge of character when it comes to choice of friends. OK, Gianni, we'll leave it there because we've got another person we can talk to, former MI5 agent um, Annie Mashon joins us now. Thanks very much for coming on to the programme. Um, why do you think Joe Biden has now chosen this time to turn on his allies? I think there is very much an element of trying to distance America from the mess that is emerging in the Middle East. Um, I'm astonished, in fact, that he has actually told the truth about what some of those allied countries are doing in the Middle East. But I suppose I'm more astonished at his apparent amnesia about what America and Britain, um, coincidentally, were trying to ferment in Syria only a year ago. They were not only um, putting star intelligence personnel on the ground and providing logistical support to the rebels in Syria. They were spearheading the campaign to try and oust Assad. Assad was one of the few remaining um, dictators from the original axis of evil. They've already got rid of Gaddafi and Hussein. Um, they've backed off from Iran and they've certainly backed off from North Korea now. They have nukes. But Assad seemed to be fair game and um, was a sitting duck as well because Russia at that time was trying to build a new um, energy pipeline which would go through Syria and provide the Russians with a, a Mediterranean base to get the energy from Iran through to Europe. So it was very much in America's and Britain's interest to try and destabilize Syria by trying to take out Assad and by providing support to these rebel groups, many of whom then did evolve into these more extremist groups. So, so only last year. Sorry. Only last year. So, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Year, um, 
only last year our governments were still talking about aiding these groups, even al-Nusra, which had been taken over by al-Qaeda extremists, um, which were frightening even some of the original al-Qaeda people. So um, they were desperate to get rid of Assad in order to thwart Russian interests in that region. Where does this leave the coalition, given that he's taken such a swipe at two of its leading members? A very good question. Um, it's interesting that he has raised the fact that Saudi Arabia is involved in funding some of these groups. Um, but I think America is really taking a risk here because they are such key allies in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia. For them to attack them um, and to sort of try and undermine the credibility of, of what Saudi Arabia has been doing in the region, and not just in the region, but by funding Wahhabism schools across Europe and across America as well to spread this radical version of Islam, um, is, is quite frankly astonishing. Uh, and what does it say about what's going on in the White House at the moment? Can we presume there's some sort of split there? Because we're hearing from some elements that they would like to continue to fund um, the moderate Syrian opposition. But Mr Biden has come out and said, look, there's no such thing as a, a moderate middle. <laughs> well, perhaps, perhaps the vice president is finally learning some lessons from history. It doesn't matter who you think your friends are going to be in the region. Very often they will be taken over or subsumed into a more radical group. And we've seen this time and time again. And this is what keeps creating these new threats across the Middle East. Um, so perhaps there is a split and perhaps he is of the more moderate faction, as opposed to the neocon hawks that Obama has sought to appease over so many years with all these different interventions across the Middle East. Uh, just a final question to you, Annie. You're a former intelligence um, officer. Barack Obama has blamed uh, his own intelligence services for not picking up the danger of ISIS early enough. What, what do you make of that? Is it, is it their fault? Well, they seem to drop the ball regularly. I mean, they, they didn't pick up on the uh, so-called hijackers before the 9-11 attacks either. They didn't seem to have a very good feel for what was going on in Libya when they were in the process of toppling Colonel Gaddafi and in the immediate aftermath when their embassy got shot up. So this shows a sort of systemic failure of the intelligence that the US government is getting. And I would put that down partly to their over-reliance on dragnet in electronic surveillance, where it is very easy to miss all the needles in the haystack. What they should go back to, perhaps, is more targeted uh, human intelligence sources on the ground that can really tell them what it's like on the ground, and they can provide proper warnings to the people who need to make the policy about what they do in the Middle East. All right, fascinating talking to you. Uh, that's uh, Annie Mashon, a former MI5 agent, live from the UK. Thank you.